All right. It looks like we have people hopping on. How exciting. Okay. <laughs> All right, everyone. We'll be getting started in a few more minutes. We're going to give people some time to get on the webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, let me know. Feel free to type anything in the chat if you do have anything you'd like to us to address today or anything at all, feel free to type it in the chat and we'll get started in just a couple more minutes. Hi, Eric. Hey, Kristen. Hey, Bob. So we got a lot of people ready to go. This is awesome. I'm looking forward to this, Bob. <laughs> I have no idea. I can't see who's on. All right. <laughs> That's all right. I can. No, I can. We're in a good spot. Oh, I see there's, oh, I, wait a minute. I can see. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah. And if you're just joining us, we'll be starting in just a couple more minutes. We're going to give everyone a little bit more time to hop on. Yeah. Paul Shikara. Hey, Paul. I know you can't say hi to me, but I see you're on this. <laughs> can definitely say hi in the chat. <laughs> That's right. Tanya, but hi, Tanya. I see her. Yeah, a few people I know. Tanya says hello. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, oh, they're popping up. I can see. There we go. Yeah. Um, this, Christian, this might be a good time just to remind them what the interaction might look like. Maybe you already did. Definitely. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and I will um, move forward in just a second. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. My name is Kristen Salinas. I'm the marketing manager um, for our operations management portfolio. Um, I also have Eric Weber here. He is our portfolio manager um, for this discipline as well. Um, and then we also have Bob Jacobs, we're very excited, who is going to be talking about incorporating Excel into your operations management course today. Um, so the way things are going to work today is you can definitely ask us questions in the Q&A. You can ask us questions in the chat. Uh, we'll be answering them throughout the presentation. We also might shout out some of your questions um, so Bob can answer them for you as well. And then we'll stay, we'll kind of hang on after the presentation today and uh, we can continue with Q&As with whatever questions that you have for us. Um, feel free to, uh, we will have some polls throughout, um, some polls throughout the presentation today. So feel free to answer those, give us, provide us some feedback. Um, and this is some information that we're real interested to hear about, um, to, to learn a little bit more about your teaching. Um, Eric or Bob, do y'all have anything else to add today? No, oh. just, uh, thank you for joining. Thanks, Bob. Right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and Bob is going to take over. Um, so we'll be listening to him for the next 30 minutes. So thank you, Bob. Okay, let me try to. Okay, I have it now. Let's see, there it goes. Well, welcome to all you guys, everybody. It's a uh, Good to be doing this. It's kind of fun. I haven't done one of these for a while, and uh, and so this is good. I don't, some of you probably know I'm here in Vero Beach. If you're watching the Weather Channel right now, there is a uh, hurricane coming right at us, and it's supposed to touch <laughs> this evening sometime. Of course, it's not a really it's not a, a real powerful hurricane at this point. So hopefully everything will be okay. Uh, Anyway, so hopefully my connections and everything will keep going here, although the wind's not blowing so bad, so I don't expect we'll have too much problem. Uh, but let me get started here. Uh, you're, I'm sure, all interested in uh, this uh, using Excel. And uh, I guess to give you a little background on this, uh, this is something that McGraw-Hill, my understanding is, is anyhow, has been using 
for a number of years in the accounting and finance courses and, and all, but now we've uh, been developing apps, developing uh, exercise, developing problems and all in uh, uh, integrated Excel, you know, in the ops for in the ops books and, and uh, the core and uh, the new 17E versions of my books will have, you know, this uh, capability of this thing available through a, through a connect. Uh, I guess one thing it'd be good. Why don't you put up the, the poll, Kristen, about, uh, I, I mean, I'm curious just to begin with how many of you actually use Excel in your classes? I would expect that many of you do. If you would go ahead and, and answer this thing and we'll get started. But, you know, clearly Excel uh, uh, is, well, I mean, it, I guess my first slide here has to do with interaction, engaging students, you know, activities in class games, things like that. Activities that require students preparation, study a situation, take a position, defend, small uh, team group type things, interaction. These are all ways to engage students uh, in classes, and they're extremely, you know, important things from that standpoint. But uh, it's funny when you put this Excel thing in here. I have no control over my thing here. Oh, <laughs> it looks like we only have four people who don't use Excel in their classes. Eighty-eight percent of everyone up here uses Excel. Okay, so so I don't. I'm talking to the choir here in terms of of uh, you do you are using Excel in your classes. I'm going to go ahead and kill. Okay, now I can get to it here. Uh, okay, good. So in terms of using Excel, I, I'm sure that, that you know, part of the, the rationale, you know, has to do with the visual representation of data, the tables and graphs, uh, the ability to do math with formulas and all. Uh, you know, this is, this is a skill that students, students should have. Uh, when I get into showing the thing here in a minute, uh, it surprises me sometimes at how uh, naive, some not naive, I, but you know that how unskilled some students are in their use of Excel. So I think it's very important that you know they learn these skills and they become pretty good at it, especially you know today. Now, in terms of activities that you can do with 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 the the Excel, uh, you know, there's certainly the analysis type of of problem that you've got. You know, you 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 give the student a situation, they they do some analysis, they take a position, they defend the position, these types of things. So, you know, Excel, you know, uh, it augments that analytic aspect associated with this. You know, another thing that a way to use Excel that that uh, that I found is interesting and that I've incorporated in some some problems, this especially when they're they're more complex, more difficult types of thing is to show a student an analysis with Excel and then have them reverse engineer the analysis uh, through the Excel. And by doing this, they learn, you know, what the actual equations are and how to do things, something that they might see is quite difficult to begin with. But, but if they see the example, they can see what a result should be, uh, then, you know, it, it gives them then that confidence to go in and, okay, see what, I, if I can figure out exactly how that was done. And so I have done a, a few exercises where I actually use this approach, and particularly there's a learning curve one that's it's quite interesting. And, and, you know, learning curves can be really magic to, to students, but, but once you look at it from an Excel standpoint, it's maybe not such a difficult thing to do. Uh, you know, one thing I'm interested, by the way, in terms of you guys all use, uh, all use Excel, how do you grade your Excel exercises? Kristen, can you put that poll up? Because this is one of the big things that's neat about uh, integrated Excel is that uh, we do have automated grading capability with it. And, uh, and so this solves you know, a gigantic problem. Now you can use it as you can use the exercises as either graded exercises, you know, where they, they submit a solution and they actually get a grade for it, or you can use it as more learning exercises where they have multiple shots at, at, uh, at uh, uh, you know, getting the correct answer. So the, you know, the connect can be set up either way. So uh, it's interesting, 24% of you say automatically. I think probably many of you use templates that you overlay. I know that's what I used to use uh, quite a bit, you know, uh, uh, you know, with this, but 
okay, using GAs, TAs, don't grade them. It's very interesting. 15% don't grade or other. I don't know what the other would be, but but uh, it'd be, put on chat, by the way. Why don't you guys tell me what some of the other ways you use? Just, just put a quick one or two words on chat. It'd be interesting just to see what that is. Uh, now, let me move on, though, and I'll, I'll pick up on, on what you said in terms of that here in a minute. But uh, in, in terms of this, this integrated Excel capability, uh, there's really two levels that you might look at uh, that, that we've developed. One has to do with end of chapter problems that were that will be available in an integrated Excel. So these are, are problems, you know, you know, here's some data, you know, do some equations to calculate a reorder point, whatever it is, you know, for end of chapter. And, and, and so there'll be a number of that, those types of exercises. By the way, in terms of what it looks like in Connect, this, you know, it's if you select a question to add to an assignment in Connect, you know, you'll see that there's going to be, there'll be an integrated Excel option and, and you can pick the things up from there and actually put them in there. So anyway, at one level, there are the chapter problems, and we'll have a number of those available. Uh, then at another level, uh, um, a number of the analytical exercises that are at the, at the end of the chapters uh, uh, in, in the core and also in 17E will also have analytical uh, uh, Excel type or integrated Excel type of, of uh, uh, capability with them. And, and I think these are the ones that are really kind of interesting. Uh, and here's the ones that we're looking at right now. There'll, there'll be a, probably a few other ones as well, but this is kind of an ongoing process of developing these things. Uh, now, let me switch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over and actually bring up, uh, how am I doing here? Okay. Uh, bring up Connect. And, and I want to show you one of these. This is one for a location problem for the location chapter. And here you see the thing coming up. Okay, so this is this is one of the location problems that we have in the book, and uh, and you know it's a, a centroid type type problem where we have plants in these different locations, and we're trying to calculate the centroid for it. Now, let me just show you some of the features here of, of uh, uh, integrated Excel with this. Uh, so we're trying to find the, the X and the Y centroid of these things. Uh, well, one approach that we can use for doing this is simply you know, take the, the X coordinate, multiply it times the volume. We're just getting the weighted you know, average of, of these coordinates times the volume plus this times this, okay? And divided by sum of the volume. Yes. So we can do the calculation. Now, uh, so, so anyway, that's one way to do it. Now, by the way, let me tell you that the, the we, we've got the, the thing on virtually all these exercises set that they have to use formulas for it. They can't just put an answer in that. So if a student just put 420 in there, they wouldn't get they wouldn't get the correct answer uh, for it. Or if they put equals 300 times 4,000 plus 375 times 6,000, they wouldn't get the correct answer for it that way either. Uh, and you know, what surprises me is how many times you, still, you see students actually answering the questions using using numbers like using the, the Excel is just like a calculator. You know, another way, as most of you you know uh, are aware, I'm sure, is that you can use some product. For this thing, we take the sum product of this column. Well, this is for the Y one, isn't it? So this column. Uh, this column, and we could divide by the sum there. So we get we can calculate it that way. So here we calculated it actually in two different ways in Excel. And and one interesting thing is that the 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 software is pretty smart. It actually can figure out. Can figure out the uh oh it says I did something wrong. What did I do wrong here? So let's look at this. We've got B6 all times D7. It should be 
D6 here. And uh, D7, D7 times D7. So here's where I made my actual mistake. Now, if we put this thing in, in a mode where we can correct our mistakes, we can go in here and actually correct it. Check the work again. And sure enough, I get it right this time. Now, as I said, you could you can set it up either way in here where where you 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 know give them a second chance or you know it's graded straight out. So anyway, there's there's just a simple example of uh, one of the features of this thing. Now, uh, I'm curious as to how many of you guys actually use Solver in in Excel. So put that poll up there. And what I'm going to try to show you here is a uh, 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 simple transportation problem and developed a number of these things that can be used uh, with uh, integrated Excel. One thing that, that this version of integrated Excel does not have, or it does not have, is the solver. So, so anytime we use a problem like this, you know, we have to come up with a way that the students can actually solve it uh, more by inspection as opposed to to you know, using the solver uh, associated with it. In this this problem, this is kind of a, a little bit different problem in that, in that it's not cost minimization, but rather profit maximization. And uh, uh, so many, of, it's, it's interesting. Eighty percent of you use it, use the solver. So this would be a great thing if Microsoft could put this in here. Uh, but as I said, right now they don't have it. You know that capability in here. Now let me show you this problem though on how. I set these problems up just to, to give you an idea of, of what we can do with, with uh, integrative uh, Excel with these. Uh, this is a, a situation where we have a, a factory that's making washing machines and they're making them in New York and Fort Worth and San Diego and Minneapolis. And they're buying the uh, motors for the washing machines from plants that are in Boulder, Macon, Macon uh, Georgia and, and Gary. Uh, and, and we have these volumes that are being made and these capacities that are available in terms of the, of the motors. So what we're trying to do is figure out, you know, how, you know, where the motors should come from to serve these plants. And I have a matrix here that shows what the profit is, not what the cost is, but what the profit is. I, I you know, I, I understand what you're thinking here. It just switches the problem up. A little bit. So this is the profit. It'd be, for example, twenty dollars from a washing machine that's uh, uh, made in New York and uses a, a, a motor coming out of, of Macon. Okay. So a student looks at this problem and and uh, you know how am I going to solve this? Okay. And I give them a hint here. Solve this problem by choosing the maximum profit options. Okay. So, so use a greedy algorithm to try to find the maximum, the maximum profit associated with each one. So if we work here, we can see that the highest profit here is 20. So let's go ahead and use just as much of that as we can. So that would be the ones that are uh, uh, made in New York using, using uh, uh, motors out of Macon. So 50,000 of those. Okay, yeah, that works out well. And then what about our next one? The next highest is uh, looks like here Fort Worth where we have 18. So we want to use as much as that. Well, Fort Worth we need 70,000. So let's go ahead and use that 70,000. Okay, so we've got that one. And notice we've met demand for those two. Now, if we go further here, now uh, the next highest profit and what we have left here, it looks like Minneapolis here, which is 16. And so 16, we have 80,000 out of here. Okay, and things look okay. So we've got that, uh, and we got Minneapolis. Now we still got to take care of San Diego, and the highest profit here would be this thirteen dollar one. So we, we go here at San Diego, San Diego, sixty thousand, and you can see we can do it in terms of meeting demand. The problem is the problem is that we've now exceeded the capacity for for making by 10,000. And so we've got to reduce that. So we reduce that to 10,000. That now we still want to meet the rest of that demand. You know, the next lowest cost here would be this $12 profit per, per each one. So we'll you go ahead and use that. 
Okay, now we've exceeded supply here. If we go over here to Minneapolis, we're going to have to reduce that. Okay, and so we've got that, but now we haven't met demand. You can see the next highest profit here is the 13, and so 10,000 here. And, and so we've come up with a solution. Now, a student certainly wouldn't do it as quickly as I just did it right here. But our idea, my idea here is that a student can just using the logic and understanding, you know, that, okay, you're trying to get the highest profit and you have constraints associated with it, you know, can, can come up with actual solutions to this thing. I can check my work here quickly. And here you can see that it's actually saying where I have my answers, it's, it's correct. Uh, to get full credit for this, they would have to put the zeros in the in the other cells that are that are uh, uh, that are vacant at this point. But anyway, I've set up a number of problems like this that that allow you to to actually you know use the notion of of uh, optimization, but it's through a greedy approach to to a, a solution to the problem. Anyway, so uh, so anyway, that's where we've handled that kind of thing. Now let me show you move on to another example here. To, to show you, uh, let me get rid of this. To, to show you another example of how Android of Excel can be used. And, and uh, some features of it. This next one is an inventory problem. Many of you probably use uh, uh, a single period inventory problem to introduce uh, to introduce inventory control, and and uh, and that's what this problem is all about. It's called Big Ten Splatters. The scenario has to do with uh, an internet-based company uh, that the, these uh, students uh, have started, and they're selling sweaters uh, to to uh, Big Ten schools uh, on the internet, and. Uh, this the sweaters you know are monogrammed and and specially set up you know for the season so that so that uh you know they're really attractive you know uh you know to to their their things but anyway that's what they've got is this type of game and, and as it turns out they set this thing up last year and uh and here's what the actual sales were at uh, the three schools that they used last year uh they're now going to expand this to two more schools, and and they're going to they're going to uh, and, they, and they've gotten some forecasts from the principals, you know, uh, that are uh, that are in the uh, you know they're they're selling the sweaters and also done some market research for next year. And here's what their average forecast is for each of the schools that they plan to do the next year. Of course, you can say I've got the rest of the schools here, and the exercise can be extended to or to where you know it includes. Uh, more of the Big Ten schools. Uh, anyway, what I'm going to do here, it, here's a cell that needs to be filled out, and I'm going to make a mistake. I'm going to, you know, what here, what it wants is the total forecast for this. But what I'm going to do is rather than putting some there, I'm going to put uh, average just to show you what, how this thing actually handles that. So average that. So, so clearly that's a mistake, but uh, but we'll see how that works here in, in a minute. Uh, okay, part of the exercise asks us to calculate some financials for this, the total revenue. So we got sales times uh, the sales price for this thing, the cost associated with them equals sales times the cost per unit, margin, which is revenue minus cost. And we can extend this down and ask for some totals here. And Bob, as you're working through that problem, there's a few questions that have come up in, in yeah. chat that are maybe more um, <clears throat> involved to answer, though we're doing our best. Um, is this a, can I jump Go in ahead. real quick? Go ahead, I'll just fill the rest of this out. Yeah, so a, a lot of you are uh, sending chats and Q&A and private messages about the availability of these. So um, I love to hear your excitement for that. That's great. Um, 
these are really close to being ready for you to use. Um, they're in, a, Bob's actually in our testing environment right now. Um, so our, our goal is that these be available for you to use in the spring term. Um, we're probably two, three weeks out of pushing them live in Connect. Um, so you'll, you'll see a, um, a uh, kind of an email marketing message letting you know that we've got some uh, integrated Excel materials come out um, at some point when those are when those are live, but uh, you can find them inside of Connect when they do go live. Um, under if if you use Connect now, you know there's like an, there's an add assignment button, and Bob, maybe we can show them in a minute when you wrap up here. But there's an add assignment button kind of in the middle, uh, and then you can choose the top option that's a question bank. Click the question bank, and then you generally see a list of um, chapter folders in there, and this has its own folder it's obviously not a chapter but uh, you'll see an integrated excel folder and that will have the question bank of all the integrated excel material so bob's our only author um right now that's developing his own integrated excel questions that are specific to his book so if you use one of bob's books you will have uh integrated excel material that's specific to his textbooks and the examples within um you also will have access to a bank of generic integrated Excel questions that are a little more granular. You can see Bob's are a bit more involved in advance and sometimes even combine multiple learning concepts. Um, the more generic ones that we're developing are very specific and a little bit smaller. So uh, we actually might recommend you could scaffold the, the learning, right? And start with the smaller um, individual integrated Excel assignment and then move on to Bob's. Um, so again, more information, not quite ready yet, but they'll be out very soon. Um, and then another question was just about Excel tools and prep. Um, and uh, we do have a new assignment type called OM prep, uh, operations management prep materials. And there's actually some basic Excel videos and uh, some assignable questions inside of Connect. Uh, that would be included in this email that we'll release and let you know. So uh, we have a little bit of support to help with the Excel. I think we can make it better and we'll continue to, to move along with that. That OM prep would be similar to integrated Excel in the same area. It would just have its own OM prep folder. Uh, so you'll see those uh, above chapter one in all of your textbooks. Um, and uh, if you want to learn more about this, uh, we've got digital faculty consultants that'd be happy to help you implement this in your course. Kristen and I would be happy to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with anybody else as well. But um, okay, let me uh, finish this up. really quickly. Yeah, go ahead. I've gone ahead, and, and you guys, I'm pretty sure, are familiar with uh, the single period problems. I filled out the, you know, uh, calculated what the critical probability is, and all this. And let me check my work around. Remember, we made a mistake in terms of the of the uh, expected demand associated with this. So here, here, sure enough, I check it. It found that that was that was an incorrectly done. It's marked it wrong, but notice that it's marked the rest of these correct. It actually gave partial credit for the thing. It recognized that this was wrong, and even though this was used in these calculations, uh, you know, you had the right formula in there, which I think is really a cool capability of this thing that it can, it, you know, it's smart enough to understand you know, that partial credit. Now, if I go ahead and change this thing to sum and, uh, you know, and calculate it correctly and then check it. Sure enough, it's going to give me credit for it and, and get it correct. So anyway, it's, it's kind of a neat package. Uh, I, you know, I was kind of skeptical, but actually it's a pretty mature capability because, you know, it's been used for accounting for quite a while. Uh, of course, in ops, we're doing some things that go beyond, I think, what, you know, they do in the accounting and, and well, all of the finance course as well, the present value stuff and everything is pretty complex as, as well. So, so anyway, this just gives you, you know, some quick examples anyhow of, of, of uh, what this actually is. I've got one more slide here, but I'm open for any questions that you might have at this point. By the way, you know, uh, we have rewritten a lot of things, you know, in terms of the exercises and stuff for the ones that have integrated. So they work well with, with, the, uh, with the app as well. Uh, 
we're kind of out of time here, but I'm open for any any questions that you might have. I'm I'm actually quite interested in seeing how 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 this how excited or how interested you are in actually this this type of app. Yes, and thank you for everything. Uh, we've been having questions throughout your presentation. Um, so this is a really popular subject. We hear a lot about Excel. Um, time is up. So if everyone, if anyone has any questions, we're going to hang back and answer your questions until you have none. So please feel free to type them in the chat. Let us know if you, you can also use the Q&A function. We can answer your questions through there. Um, but like I said, we are going to hang out, answer any questions that you do also have, like Eric stated earlier, we can also connect you with a digital faculty consultant to go through anything that we talked about today more in depth um, for your specific understanding. By the way, I'll be at, at DSI and Palms, so I look forward to seeing a lot of you there. That's right. Yeah, you've got a workshop at DSI, don't you, Bob? Um, yeah, we'll be showing a lot of other things. I come to the yeah, workshop. That's great. Kristen and I will be there as well. McGraw Hill will have a booth. Bob will be there um, hanging out. We'll, we'll, we'll be there as well. Um, feel free to put more questions in the chat. I think we've answered most of them. Uh, actually, I see open a Q&A. Maybe I didn't get to that. Um, no, I, th I think we answered most of those. Um, well, we I got to give a shout DSI. out. I see another contributor, Haida, is on the call here. I don't know if she dropped off yet, but um, hi, Haida. Um, that's great. Any other questions? Any other issues? Questions? Okay. All right. I guess we're wrapped up right okay. on time. I love it, Bob. We're on time. That's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> great. Well, thank you so much, Bob. This was really great. I really hope exciting. everyone enjoyed it and got some really great information from us. And it sounds like a lot of y'all will be at DSI. So yeah. I'm sure we'll get to meet you in person at DSI, which is very exciting. Um, you can, I'm going to go ahead and put my email in the chat for you. You can go ahead and reach out to me if you do have any questions at all. Um, and like I said, if you are interested in getting connected with a digital faculty consultant, please reach out. We can definitely get that all set up for you as well. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Okay. All right. Thanks, Bob. I'm just looking at the questions.